Welcome to week two of the Illustriad, where Iron Boffin, representing Demeter and the Earth Pantheon, is taking on Druby, representing Aelis and the Wind Pantheon. After a rough start last week for Iron Boffin, he's looking to reclaim victory here against Druby, who took a big win over Magnitude. We're going to be taking a look at their pack openings this week and ultimately their deck profiles as they head into their week two clash. As always, be sure to hit that like button down below and subscribe to the channel if you guys are new and leave a comment down below who you think is going to win this upcoming showdown. Don't forget, you can always head over to shopalestrals.com and pick up some sweet merch like my Stellar Hydrate shirt or some Starter Decks and more. Without further ado, let's check out these pack openings and see what they are going to add to their decks for week two. Yo, what's up, guys? My name is Iron Boffin, and we are back for our week two pack opening of the Illustriad. Now, after every week, you get to open a new, like a new promo, you get to open the promo pack, artist pack some booster packs, you know, all you get some different options. I'm going right back into the booster box. I'm still looking for one Viserys. What is going on guys? Juby here getting ready for our week two matchup here. And we're going to choose to open six more packs out of our box that we have here. So what we're gonna do, maybe I should just like do that or something. I don't know, either way, it doesn't matter. We're gonna choose six more packs. We'll do the side by side again, one from each side. And we will open these bad boys for our week two matchup. Now, this video is probably going to be a lot quicker than my last one, obviously, since we um, we, we were more familiar with the cards than everything. You guys seen a bit of a less So we're just going to kind of just dive into it with these six packs right here. And let's get a nice little opening going, my friends. I'm going with a different strategy. I'm going to go six from the right this side this time. And I'm hoping that I'm going to get deep into the box and I'll get something good here. Count them out for you. One, two, three, four, five, and six. We got one of my favorite cards, Majesty. So hopefully we'll get some good pack luck. Going right into it, like I said, we're hoping for Viserys. Um, I also wouldn't mind pulling some uh, Golden Apple of Discord so I can start running like a Latagon kind of deck. Uh, there's a couple of strategies I'm kind of hoping to pull off, but I need to get some cards from the packs first. And then I can decide what you know, like artist collection pack or promo pack would be more beneficial. But I need to get some stuff from the booster packs first. We got a Quackle, a Jolton, Nimbug, Pigust, Sorlet. Man, I just got owned by that in week one. I'm going to need to get one of those involved. Like a Vault, Griffuse, and a Sparket. You know, I'm owning an Inkle Links. Okay, Inkle Links is my rare. I'm really starting to think I should open the... Uh, thunder starter deck because i have opened a lot of packs that would make a pretty mean deck with that all righty here we go my friends we're gonna open up the top right pack first and just hop into it and i love these little easy to tear you pull it right down bada bing bada boom you are good to go all right Let's see what we got going on here remove those over a little bit we got a clovey necroff earth scout Earth Mog, Earth Seer, Barabog, Titano Stalk. We have a lot of new uh, grass cards here. Another Riceros right off the bat. And a Vipiro just in case you want to run some more Fire Spirits. But a nice Thunder Riceros. That honestly might go right into the Week 2 deck. Having two of these guys is going to be absolutely massive for us. Let's see what we can grab here. Okay, hold on. Okay, almost got it. There we go. Okay, we're just hoping for a Viserys. It's all we want. We're going to have a Pyro, Small Tuga, Veritaqua, or a Water Deck could also be pretty good. I'm getting a lot of things that... Ooh, a Sakurasaur. Uh, you can expend an Earth Spirit to draw two cards. That's a really good one. Galaxy. I might actually get that into my deck. Boombat and a Tectoros. One of the good cards, I would say, out of my starter deck that kind of helps me put on some offensive pressure. Probably wouldn't mind running three of those. Let's open the Majesty pack now and keep it going here, like I said. Alrighty. Islands of Aeolia possibly going in. A nice drops of Leaf. Golden Apples of Discord. Charon's Obel. Another beautiful Pegust. Javalanthus. Ooh, that's a new uh, Water Spirit card for us there. Another Boom Bat. Ooh, spicy. Let me move this down here. Kinleo. Imperial, a beautiful, beautiful card here. And we get a Taratless Foil. Look at that. Might be a little off camera here. Check that out. A beautiful. Oh, I'm going the wrong way over here. Look at that. Beautiful. Be look at this shine. I know it's like going to be a little blurry and jacked up for you guys here as I try to like maneuver. But oh my goodness. A beautiful, beautiful 
Earth Spirit right there. Tyrannus, phenomenal stuff. We like it, we like it, we like it. See, I didn't get to make too many changes to my starter deck um, from the first week of packs. So I'm hoping I can get some stuff here that'll allow me to run some funnier things. We got Earth Smog, Earth Smear, Earth here, sorry. Ignector, War Might, Crack Kid, Shield of Achilles, Scavagem, Spy Nymph. Ooh, and a Hollow Vol Tempest. That is a sweet, sweet card. And I'm telling you right now, I'm really starting to think about opening that a uh, Thunder starter deck there because we do get the Hollow Vol Tempest there. That could make a crazy deck. That's a huge pull for Iron Boffin, grabbing one of the best and most coveted cards in the game. Let's see how Drooby can respond to that. All right. Moving along. Moving along. We, we're we eight for eight with hollows, dude. They're actually, I don't know if that counts towards the uh, hollows in the in the box, but hey, we're cooking. Jolton, Volcanic Forge. We get a Forest Stadium card. I don't know what my voice just did there. Nimbug. P-Gust. Carry on. Peliquarius. What a name, dude. Love it. Scythe of the Meter. And a full art straddle moth. <gasps> Look at that. Full art bodacious beauty here. Good to go. A wind spirit. Wow, we are cooking straddle moth in the building. I love this full art straddle moth. Oh my goodness. What a card there. We're cooking. I might have to open a uh, thunder starter deck if I'm not going to get what I want from the uh, Earth side of things. We got a Tyratlas, Earth Seer, there we go, Ignector, Warmite, Sluggle, Typhlint, Shield of Achilles, Scavagem, Spy Nymph, and a Latagon. Okay, I'm happy to get another Latagon. I only had one of these, so I'm happy to get a second one because I do want to run the Golden Apple of Discord strat. Uh, I think that can be pretty pretty mean we are cooking and our week two matchup we're gonna have some new cards to play with we're going more into depth about those in the team builder but right now we're just showing you the polls i ain't gonna go too crazy here i keep repeating myself because i have anxiety all righty nectar we got a nice little uh fire lamp there another crack hit going with the water globby foamy and oh my god <laughs> We are literally cooking right now. Actually insane. Um, but now I have two Latagons, and that feels pretty good. Now if I can pull some Ambrosias or more Golden Apple of Discords, I will be a happy camper. But let's see what we get. Oh, and I pull my Hollow Spirit. Definitely going to throw this in my deck just for the flex, so that's pretty sweet. Then we have an Elechick, Quackle, Jolton, Drataya, always a good one when you were a player. See, this is another good card for the um, Golden Apple of Discord deck, so that could be really good. Rumagem, Spy Nymph, Sakurasaur, and a Barabog. When an opponent casts an Elestral or Rune without Earth or Water, they must expend a Spirit. That's actually kind of dirty. I might get this involved in my deck and maybe like run like a Tsunami or something. I don't know if I pulled one of those, but... This is actually nutty, my friends. Like, literally, literally wild. The packs that we are getting here. Actually insane. And let's just keep it going. Rummagem, Clovey, Necruff, Ur Scout, Ur Smog, Waspire. Another Kinleo. Kinleo is good. It's going to be good tech, you know? We get that going. We get a little fire action going. Cinder, another monster. Another Rise from the Ashes and a water spirit so last time we didn't have enough uh earth spirits to get the deck with an earthquake in it but now we definitely have enough and now we have another rise from the ashes actually insane packs right now we have over four hours around the top like we're, we are absolutely cooking right now dude jerby has continued to hit big in his pack openings grabbing that full art stratomoth grabbing another rise from the ashes which could prove to be crucial but let's see if boffin has anything left in the tank as he searches down that viscerous anyway i am on my last pack of my six here i do think i have gotten some decent options for deck building and i am excited to give it a whirl another like is not hollow this time helios's chariot ride drataya another one is huge so happy about that clovey what does clovey do when this clovey receives one or more earth spirits you can draw a card okay so i can run that with sakurasaur uh griffuse spark it cybernetric 
Oh, and a hollow altar of stars nexus of spirit. If you do, I can change the position of an electoral. So basically, it's like a it's a little sword that I can nexus with it. That could be huge for me. I am definitely running this in the next deck. I got three hollows, three hollows and six packs. That's a pretty good run right there. But that's going to conclude my pack opening for week two. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm excited to kind of get into some deck building. So I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace. Now, this might be a hollow as well. But the way things are going, this might be another hollow right on top. And let's get it. Veritaqua, great card for us in week one. We have a uh, Dratea. Rummagin. Clovey, another. We got some juice going there. Necro. Yeah, boom, baby. We have three. We have four of those now. We'll see what we got going on. Hammer of Hephaestus. Nice. Eruption. And there it is. The Ephiros or the Aphiros. And another Wind Spear. We definitely have plenty of those. And again, all foils up the wazoo. This isn't a foil, but it's just a good card we might throw in there. We have options now. Like, this is crazy. This is actually crazy. Like, I'm almost positive these are our Sarah, so it's going to go right in. We have a Straddle Moth full art. Like, we are cooking, my friends. And that's going to be our next set of six packs for our Week 2 game. We're going to go make a deck now and see what we got going on. I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, with the pack openings behind us, it's time to take a look at Iron Boffin's deck profile for this week. Now, there's some interesting things going on here as Iron Boffin is just a few pieces shy of putting together some pretty optimal Earth builds. He's missing more Ambrosias. He's missing those Golden Apple of Discord, so he's not able to quite go full Latagon yet. And he's also missing a couple other pieces to kind of round out some of the rest of his deck so for week three i think he's definitely got to grab a starter deck but for now he's got a third tech taurus to play with let's see what build he's bringing now we did have a tough week one but i'm hoping with some of the packs that i opened after week one that we're gonna get a little bit more going i felt like after week one i felt like i had the offense i felt like it was there i just needed a little more defense so you think uh so you're gonna see that i added a couple of more cards into the deck to hopefully kind of give me some defense i was investing a lot of into my elestrals and my opponent had an answer so i want to have an answer for when they try to do that to me so that was the goal this week so i took out some cards and i added some defense so we're gonna find out um i did keep my three sprout ears you know you can't go wrong with a trusty three five drop that lets you start out search out uh an artifact so i can get my sight that way so i can i left them in there uh then i got my two tech toros uh, i was i think i pulled another but i think two is plenty to be honest with you uh these guys are really good just because they get the extra attack when uh with enchanting uh, Earth Spirits, so I kept them in for some offense. Uh, nothing wrong with some 3-2 beat sticks. Um, I kept my Spine Nymphs in here. I'm still going up against another Wind deck. So, you know, worst case scenario, I can throw a Spine Nymph into a Pentera, give him zero attack, and deal with him that way. So he's still a little bit... He's like an emergency board clear card. Otherwise, I'm going to be able to ascend him, hopefully, into uh, his big brother. This is what we're hoping for. I got some Equal Inks. Equal links is good because you can uh, allows for next thing, and then also if I can nexus off things, I can target and destroy uh, a rune. Yes, a rune. So a little back row destruction with equal links. So that'll be pretty good if they're trying to play defense against me. Then I have a way to kind of disrupt their backboard and try to keep momentum going in my way. Um, and then some of the odd balls we got here. I took out one of my the Graflora. Uh, I only have one in there. I don't think two is very necessary. Um, I have a lot of one cost. Earth Spirit, so I, you know, do, do I really need to be going into the Underworld for a lot of them? Probably not. So I only kept one of them just because he's a 1-4, so that's not bad. And we have Rummagem because when I normal cast him, I can uh, search out an enchantment cast of one Earth Spirit. So he's pretty good. Honestly, I should probably add another one of these, but I don't think I pulled one. So I just have the one Rummagem for now. Now, I was talking about Spine Nymph. Hopefully this week we get our boy Spinosect involved. If we get Spinosect, what's really good about him, he can attack in defense. So he has this big 9 defense stat. He can attack there. Um, the big thing with this one is he is wind. He should be wind enchanted when I play him. So he'll be immune to Sorlet. So that would be really good as we did see Sorlet caused me a lot of problems in week one. And I'm definitely, I was thinking about taking Spinosect out, but the fact that, um, Sorlet can't target Spinosect with its ability means I got to keep them in there and I got to, Spinosect is going to be one of my big cards. If I can get one of those out on the field, I'm going to be feeling pretty good. Um, we also have our two September. September isn't anything crazy. He's a 5-7. Um, but he's just a way to kind of get out my Scent Harbor. If I feel like if I'm able to, you know, if I'm in a position to invest into a big card, September is the best way I can get out uh, my big boy Scent Harbor. Speaking of the devil. 
so obviously if i can get this thing out then we're going to be looking really good um this card is also going to benefit a lot from the next sync potential in my deck because if i can give him extra earth spirits then i can disenchant him and destroy cards if i need to so that can be really helpful he also gets extra attack uh you know if i got full a forest going on if i got scythe going on so if i can get him on the field he'll be doing pretty good and he is protected uh yeah if i get the forest out which would be huge for this card i probably won't bring it out if i don't have the forest but if the forest is out then he can't be uh targeted by invoke rune so that's pretty huge so he may be worth the investment if i get there especially if i can get like scythe on him too for example then he's really protected uh some of my non earth uh earth elastic rolls i got p gust p gust is always good because when he receives a wind spirit i can target and destroy a rune so again some more uh back row clearance there so p gust is always doing good aramair honestly i really want to add another one but i decided the p gusts were pretty important but a four five one drop come on now one wind spirit to play this and yeah, i can use them as a artifact if um when i send me aramir i can use them as an artifact so i can either use it for spine Sect, i can use them for like september things like that and it can help a lot so i'm expecting this to work well with september or i'm expecting it to work well with um spine Sect. And then out of my packs, I did pull a boom bat. So I'm now running three boom bats. I got to pull the trigger on boom bat. Boom bat is huge because boom bat comes out. Boom bat goes away and he takes another Elestral with him. I'm playing boom bat. Uh, I have just, I have three lightning spirits, thunder spirits. Uh, literally just, I took out the thunderstorm card I had to destroy back row. I'm like, I got plenty of back row destruction. Um, okay, now that's all my Elestral creatures. So after that, we got two foil life forests. I was really hoping I pulled another, but I didn't. Foley Forest gives me a buff to all of my uh, Earth Enchanted Spirits. Plus one defense, plus one attack. And he does get that uh, Centaur Bird gets the added protection if I have Foley Forest out. So I would really like to get another one if I can. Uh, I got two Earthquakes, more clearing. So I have two Earthquakes, three Boom Bats. That is five one drop, or no, so Earthquakes, two drops. But that's five ways to clear out an Elestral that I need to get rid of. Especially if he has cards like Pantera that I just need to get rid of. You know, so that could be pretty helpful for me. Earthquakes are a must. I still have two tornadoes again to disrupt his back row. Help me out a little bit there. I don't run a ton of cards that revol uh, involve wind spirits, you know, Aramare, Pegas, whatever, but tornado could be really important for me. I got two Demeters, two Scythes, you know, just trying to boost up my, my or my, boost up my uh, Elestrals here. Um, you know, I can disenchant a Demeter and give a card plus three, plus three to the end phase. I have Scythe to grant some protection, or no, I don't think um no i don't get any protection from this but if i start beating elestrals with it then i can recover life so that's actually pretty important especially if i want to invest in a lot then i can get it back so that's pretty big and then we're just going to our you know some of our other runes are non-elemental runes we got two nectar of the guards nectar of the gods draw some cards now these were two additions i added um i took out my two i took out my two poison tipped arrows and i added shield of achilles uh basically these are nice little uh counter runes where if my opponent declares an attack, I can expend spirits equal to their uh, enchanting cost and return them to their hand. So if my opponent gets crazy and brings out Pantera, I activate Shield of Achilles. Yeah, I spend some wind spirits or anything like that. And boom, he's back to his hand and it's really hard to get back out. So two of these with on top of my boom bats and my earthquakes, I'm, I'm going a little on the defensive this time just to kind of help preserve a little momentum here. Uh, we got an Ambrosia. Obviously, I'm going to be doing some big investments here this will be good to get some spirits back and i packed an altar of the stars uh if i next i do i can change the position of an elestral so i was actually going to add sorlets to my deck but because he's running the wind starter deck uh sorlet doesn't do anything because sorlet can't affect wind enchanted creatures or elestrals so altar of the stars was the best thing i could have pulled because now i can like swap his uh pentera to defense mode or uh there's a lot of things i can do with altar of the stars i can give um you know, Sent Harbor, um, another Earth Spirit to, you know, activate his effect. Or, you know, just ne next thing in general is pretty useful. So, we got all through the stars. And then, you know, Stone Girl of the Sky, again, more next thing. Let's me draw a card. So, that's my deck. I am running three Thunder Spirits. Again, that's just for my Boom Bats. I don't have anything else. Boom Bats, that's what those are for. Um, I actually, I'm packing my Hollow Lycoris that I pulled out of my packs. So I got one, two, three, four, five, five wind spirits. These are gonna be tough. Um, I kind of wanted to maybe shift a couple earth spirits, but I can't invest too heavily into wind spirits when I'm running an earth deck. So hopefully that will get me what I need to get done. And then I got 12, quick math. Yeah, I have 12 earth spirits.
you know hopefully uh like with scythe and ambrosia and other cards like that hopefully i can recover some of these so my earth spirits go a long way but anyway that's gonna be my week two deck preview and uh wish me luck i'm hoping to have a little bit better of uh, an appearance this time i think i learned some stuff from my week one game so i'm excited to get back into it for week two i'll catch you guys there peace Drewby has been crushing his pack openings and has a plethora of options going into week two. I do expect him to kind of stick with that standard win strategy with a few other ideas splashed in, as that's going to be the best option to try to beat Boffin's Earth Beatdown strategy. I find it interesting that Drewby is actually a Syracuse away from being able to execute Stratomoth effectively, which could be a strategy that we see employed later on in the season. What is going on, guys? Drewby here bringing you our week two deck builder for a matchup against Iron Boffin, Demeter, the Earth Spirit deck, and like I just said, Demeter is his Divine Ruin, and the Earth Spirit deck is his weapon of choice. Now, our deck builder is going to be a lot faster this time around. We're going to go through basically what we still have, but at the end of the deck builder, or the end of this list, I'm going to go over the changes and why I have those changes for this particular matchup up against Boffin and Demeter. So, off the bat, what do we got? Triple Hydrate, obviously. Staple the deck. Almost pretty much mandatory in wind. I, I don't know why you wouldn't run this. Two Twindra and then one Pantera. This is the bread and butter of the deck. This is what we're probably always going to be seeing in a lot of wind decks as of right now, for sure. Until more Illustral sets come out. Set one, set two, set three. Or whatever we keep on going for, baby. Aeromare. Glidesdale. Beautiful card. And this phenomenal 4-5 body. If we extend it to Glidesdale over the Aramare, it equips onto him. And now we're going to be a 12-5 body that can attack twice. So that's pretty freaking good. Then, an important card in this matchup, in my opinion, is going to be the Sorlet. This card is phenomenal in general. And being able to reverse stats and running anything over that has less than 5 defense is incredible. It's a 5-1 body. We love it. We love it. We love it. P-Gust. Now, this card is going to be insane in this matchup. I think this is going to be like... We are really going to want this card early. The Earth or, or the, the Earth Spirit deck has so many great runes in there. And like having like the Scythe of Demeter possibility and, and Demeter herself is actually just insane of a card. Giving him free boost of 3-3 per turn by disenchanting one with Earth Spirit. So like being able to pop Demeter or the, uh, the Scythe of Demeter, or any of his uh, runes in general, you know? Just target his, his stadium card, just popping those is going to be very important in this matchup. We are going to need P-Gust to come through for us. Exaltair, I don't know, still cheesy. We can burn them for two to get the win if we need. That's why we have him. And then this is where some of the changes start to begin. Boombat is now three. We have pulled three, we have three. This card is incredible, but again... If he gets that Centibore out, or he's immune to being targeted by Elestral Effects, we're going to be in one. However, this card is still insane. It's basically a one-for-one. One. You play it, you pop, and now we have three of them. So that's why we got that. Elechick is at one. Why we have it at one? We play him. We look for a Divine Rune, and that's it. He's basically a body, and he cancels the second Divine Rune, because either we have the Divine Rune in our hand, we have the Aeolus in our hands, or we play him and get it to our hand. So basically, we're running two Aeolus in the price of... Um, uh, only running one Aeolus, if that makes sense to you. Also, things at the deck, which you always freaking want in card games. Estrabbit, this card's insane. We went over this last time. Top through, grab a card, bada bing, bada boom. Quackle, we are going to be healing with this bad boy. Getting three Thunder back from our Underworld to our, uh, Spirit deck when we need it. Because, you're gonna see in a bit, we only have five Thunder Spirits now. So, that's gonna be important. Obviously, the one Aeolus. And then two Island of Aeolia. I think we're running three Island of Aeolia, but I think it might be a little overkill. I don't want to like flood my hand potentially and just have three of these in my hand. I'm just sitting there like a jabroni. I don't want that. We're going to run two. We could search it out like we just said, or we could just grab it ourselves by top decking it and then hard casting it. And hopefully gives us the advantage we need or get rid of his stadium uh, rune if he's running one. Then we have double Ambro We have one Ambrosia. Nectar of the Gods. Rise, I'm sorry, we do a double. Double Ambrosia, Nectar of the Gods, Rise from the Ashes as are like any 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 cast or any cost uh, or any element <laughs> cost right there. Nothing crazy. One Rise from the Ashes despite pulling another one. I think it's just too expensive to run at two. We're only going to run the one and we're going to see what happens. Ambrosia is incredible. Nectar of the Gods, obviously phenomenal too. So we got that going on and now this is where the differences begin. Like I said in the week one deck builder, I'm versing water. I'm only going to play one Tsunami in case for his tech cards. Well, this time around, we have three Tsunami. 
Why do we have three Tsunami? Well, he is probably going to be running Thunder and Earth. <laughs> I don't think he has any options for much Water Spirit in his deck. So, we're just going to go with this. Three Tsunami. Put things in defense mode. One Water. Beautiful card. All Electros go in defense mode. So, if he attacks me, uh, my Electros also go in defense mode. But it still gets the job done. I do not want him attacking and running my guys over. And I want to be able to ascend on my turn and protect my Electros so I could be able to get that Ascension off. We have two Jolton this week. Why do we have two Jolton? Well... I think the same card is important. It's a 4-2 body. And uh, we'll go a little bit more into that in a bit. But for now, we have two Jolton instead of one. And this is where I think we get really zesty here. We have Pelaquarius and three Veritaqua. Now, we have three Veritaqua. We have six water uh, uh, cards in our deck. So, we have five uh, Leviathans. That's all we pulled. But that should be good enough with Ambrosias and whatnot. We have five Thunder Spirits, and then we have ten Wind Spirits again as well. Why are we doing this? Well, I'll tell you right now. Real quick, we're going to pull up buffs. Oh my god, my voice is in there. Start a deck. Check it out. So right off the bat, looking at his like early game, having a 3-5 is really, really freaking good. Like, that's a great body. It becomes a 5-7. It becomes 11-15 if he gets a, a, the ball rolling here. A 1-5 body. This beautiful spine effect, if he wants to ascend into it, it's a 1-9. That I Excuse me, attacks in defense mode. Uh, 1-4, 4-3. This can get really beefy. The Tectorus, you know, he's very high defense Elestrals here. So I, and like, it keeps on going, you can see the rest of the deck here, but like, and Demeter is so good, Scythe on Demeter, like, it's really, it's gonna get the Earthquake and whatnot, Poison Tip Arrow is good, like, he has a lot of nice cards here, so, what I am trying to do for all of this is, um, basically, Veritaqua could run everything over, just puts anything in defense mode, I think he's like 11, 15 cent the board, just chilling out there, and he's like popping cards, well, Veritaqua could just run over it. Any defense Elestro. Pelicaris searches out a one-drop water when he's played, which gets the Veritaqua for us. So nothing really crazy there. I think Veritaqua is going to be an absolute game changer for us. It's going to be able to run things over. Yes, we have the Sorlet. Who could kind of do the same thing. But like, I, I, I make a 5-7 and 7-5 like we just saw. I make an 11-15, a 15-11. It's not really going to be enough. The 1-9 becomes a 9-1. That would be able to be enough with the Sorlet to get running over. But just in case, you could argue I could run three of these, uh, two of these instead of three. But I'm just going to go for the three. I want this card early. I want to have at least one rare to go. We are we drop two Thunder Spirits to add two more uh, Water Spirits. And then we dropped our Sonicore and Lyca Volt. We're just going to play like pure support Thunder. So all the Thunder cards we have are either going to be searching or popping or doing something for us. They're not really going to be meant for their body of the type or their... Um, uh, 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 yeah, they're just support, pretty much. Um, we were going to go Riceros, like, have two Riceros, because I have three of them now. But, like, most of the time, my Elestrals, like, this affects the whole entire board. So, like, it's not just my opponent who can't attack. It's all Elestrals that are not enchanted by Thunder. So, like, I don't have an Elestral with Thunder on it. I can't attack either. It could still be really good, because, like, if, if I go first and I play this, it's, like, almost a guaranteed Ascension, because he can't attack it. But, like, I don't really have any really good beefy Thunder Boys to go into besides the two underneath here. And even then, they're pretty mediocre stat-wise. 6-3 is not great. 7-2 is not great. And, like, he could just wall me for days with, honestly, a lot of the cards in his deck as we saw. So, like, that's going to be a problem. Like, all these, like, we could get walled pretty easily. Especially if he has his, like, Scythe of Demeter going and Demeter in general going or, like things like that you know so i just want to make sure we can like work around that and just get a guaranteed kill it might bite me in the butt not having the right sarah's i don't know how it's gonna go but i think my deck wants to be a little aggro as possible try to go wide and i also really if i can i want to crash basically attack another attack position elestral that has four attack as well or even higher so I just take myself out and then i can attend the twin twindra and the same thing. I want to be able to attack pretty early or pretty uh, often in this deck. So I don't think slowing myself down is worth slowing my opponent down. If I had bigger, beefy Thunder Boys to ascend into, yes. But for now, I'm just going to keep it like this. And we're going to rely on Veritaqua and Sorlet to bring us the dubs around these beefy 
uh, Earth, uh, Earth Spirit Elestrals over here, or Earth Elestrals in general. So that is going to be our week two deck for our man Bop and Demeter. So let's see what we got going on, and I will see you guys for that match. We've got two very interesting decks that were just built. Iron Boffin going with a really cool strategy, bringing those Aeromare to kind of counter those Sorlets, and otherwise just bringing in Earth Beater strategy. Whereas Drooby is bringing something a little bit more unique, rocking three Tsunamis and the Veritaquas to deal with those bulky defense Elestrals like Sprouter and Aeromare, but then also bringing the power with Sorlets and the Rune Control with Peekust. This is going to be a close game, and I'm excited for the Clash tomorrow, so make sure you guys like and subscribe, and we'll see you then.